started as a creative experiment to explore a different way of dyeing yarn than we've done in our first 10 years. And it also was an opportunity to think through what kind of efficiencies and what kind of um, specific services that the manufacturers that we do have here in the U.S. that spin yarn can, can, can really make their operations sing too. That, that's one thing that I got really excited about is not only is this a yarn that creatively is very satisfying to create and to work with, but it also is a really smart use of the textile manufacturing resources that we've been able to build over the last 10 years. One of the difficult things to achieve in a yarn line that is not really, really big is getting a nice nuanced palette, something that has some bright colors, some subdued colors. It plays on darker or lighter variations of the same color tone. And I always really, really love a palette that has that kind of nuance. It reminds me of a painter's palette. You, you can push a color a little darker, a little lighter, a little cooler, a little warmer. So when we first saw that, that batch of lab dips come back, immediately thought, well, why don't we actually make one color dye over two bases? And those colors are in the final palette together. So you have a, a lighter and a darker color here, and these are what gets dipped in the same vat. So if we have a bright magenta, we're, we're dumping, dunking both of these colors in that dye, one of them's gonna come out really, really bright and saturated. The other one's gonna be related. It's gonna still have that nice quality of color, but it's just gonna be turned down a little bit. And the reason I love this is because there's such a wide range of preference for color when it comes to the clothes that you wear. We have people at Brooklyn Tweed who really like bright colors and people at Brooklyn Tweed who prefer more subdued, heathered colors. And what's so beautiful about this concept is that you get, you get to satisfy both, both people. This is a yarn process that is unique and required a, a larger number of players to make it happen. You can only do this kind of dyeing by dyeing raw wool first and then having a second round of dyeing that is skein dyeing. And though that's not the type of dyeing that one facility generally does both of. So for example, to, to, to just do the over dye, we needed to work with one dye house that's a, uh, what we call a stock dyer. They dye raw wool straight off of the, you know, right after it's been cleaned off of the, the sheared sheep. And another dyer who really specializes in dyeing finished yarn. So they might be dyeing yarn for any, any type of purpose, but they're actually working only with a finished material. So in order to, um, in order to make this over dyeing process happen, we were able to work with two different dye houses that we work with on other products and combine their forces to do something that we wouldn't have been able to do with one or the other. So with Tones, we start with a Wyoming grown Columbia wool, 24 micron, beautiful fleece sourced here in the United States. And the first thing that we do with the wool is send it down to Texas, San Angelo, Texas, and have it scoured at Bowman Industries. Uh, it's clean, just using soap, no chemicals, nothing ever touches it that's unnatural. Basically warm water and soap cleans all of the natural uh, grease and anything that the sheep picked up out in the field and cleans it up, prepares the wool for spinning. But before we spin that wool, we actually took some of it and we dyed it black. We took the, the raw wool, we sent it over to JG Littlewood and Sons in Philadelphia, one of our longtime dye house partners. We dyed a portion of the wool black so that we can mix the white and the black wool when we spin the yarn to create these base heather grays. And that yarn gets spun in Two Rivers, Wisconsin at Crescent Woolen Mill, another wonderful historic U.S. mill that we've been working with for a few years. And they spin a beautiful three-ply worsted weight yarn. After the wool gets dyed into the two shades of gray, that's when we send it over to the second dye house and it's getting dyed for the second time. So the first time it's dyed as raw wool and the second time it's dyed as spun yarn. So the spun yarn in two shades of gray goes to Caledonian Dye Works in Philadelphia and that's where all the colors are dyed that you see here.
on our finished palette. After the iron's complete, a Caledonian just goes a few blocks away to Clemson Finishing Center, another manufacturer we've been working with for many years, and they twist and label all the skeins, package them into the boxes that we get sent back to us in Portland, and then we get to play. <laughs> it, I see this yarn as being possible because of the other yarns we've made in the past and because of the other U.S. manufacturing relationships that we had been building over many, many years making other products. And so there is a bit of this project that is also tied to sort of the stage that we're at in our own business journey and in our own um, exploration of what can we make in the U.S., what are, what, what is possible in terms of textile manufacturing, yarn manufacturing, given the limited number of manufacturing resources that we have available to us in the U.S. So on the outside of just the creative satisfaction of working on a project like this, there is very much a, a is also very much the accumulation of building relationships over many years and being able to kind of know already what someone can do, what they can't do, what they can do really well, and trying to design that in. So trying to think like, manufacturer A does this really well, manufacturer B does this really well, is there a way that we can come up with a yarn that utilizes both of those things from those two places and gives us something that we wouldn't be able to otherwise do.